Hi, my name is uh, Pugal from Rocket Realty. I am broadcasting uh, live using Facebook Live technology today on February 11th, 2018. Um, this show is about real estate where I talk about <coughs> real estate and answer any questions you might have. I'm using Facebook Live technology and I'm doing this broadcast from my home office in Dallas, Texas. So if you have a question on buying your first home or you're planning to sell your home in spring and you wanted to know the value of your current property or you have a question on a home improvement topic, let's say you wanted to do a bathroom remodel or you wanted to add a swimming pool or you wanted to do a kitchen remodel and you wanted to know if that remodel is going to add value to your property, join me weekly on Sundays between 6 and 6.30 p.m. at facebook.com forward slash rocket realty. Again, join me live each week on Sundays between 6 and 6.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time at facebook.com forward slash rocket realty. So let's get started. Um, from time to time you will see me that I look at my screen <clears throat> that is on the right hand side. Um, so if you have any questions you can join me on the chat and I will be happy to answer your questions. So in today's program I am going to discuss different types of mortgages. Uh, being a spring season there are a lot of shoppers out there and you wanted to buy buy a home and you wanted to understand the different loan products or mortgage loans that are available. So I wanted to make a disclaimer that I am not a lender. Okay, I am not a lender. I do not have license to sell any lending products. I do have a great team of lenders who are happy to help you if you have any questions you wanted to shop for lender or lenders, you know, reach out to me and I'll be happy to refer to one of my great many lenders that I work with. Uh, so the purpose of today's show is for me to share some basic information about mortgages. You know, what are the different mortgage or loan products? Now, <clears throat> there are essentially six different types of mortgage products that are available or loan products that are available. Again, they can be categorized into six different types. When you go to a particular lender, they may have a number of variation of these categories and they offer different uh, products. Uh, some of my lenders offer as high as 100 different loan products, but they all fall into these six different categories. Okay. So what are these categories? Number one is called fixed rate mortgage. We'll talk about what it is. Number two we, is called adjustable rate mortgage. The third kind of mortgage products are government insured like FHA, VA and USDA loans. We'll talk about these are government insured loan products. We'll also talk about conventional loans. Uh, fifth, we will talk about conforming loans. And finally, we talk about jumbo loans. Okay, so these are six different categories of loan products. And based on the lender you work with, they may give variations of these categories. Okay, so <clears throat> towards the end, if we do have time today, we will also talk about two key criteria that the lenders use in order to approve a loan. Okay, Not only approving a loan on deciding the interest rate on the money that you borrow. So based on how we make progress, the number of questions I get on my chat, uh, we will talk about those. Now, in terms of <clears throat> the first topic, which is a fixed rate mortgage, the term fixed rate means the rate in which you are borrowing money on the loan is fixed 
for the entire duration of the loan. That's called a fixed rate mortgage. So let's explain it through an example. <clears throat> let's say you are uh, purchasing a home at $300,000. Your down payment is 60000 So the amount you are borrowing is $240,000. And the lender is saying, look, based on your credit report, your income, we can provide a loan for at 4.125418 for 30 years. So what that term means is that on the 240,000, the interest rate will be 4 and 18 for the next 30 years. Okay. Now, interest rate, keep in mind, changes on a day-to-day -day basis, on a week-to-week -week basis, on a month-to-month -month basis, on a year-to-year -year basis. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. So, <clears throat> Essentially, when you lock this interest rate using fixed rate mortgage, 418 is locked for the entire duration of the loan, which is 30 years in this case. Now, in this category, fixed rate mortgage, you can get an, uh, you can borrow the 240,000 at a lower interest rate. It could be 3.35 for 15 years or you are saying I want to borrow it only for 10 years. So your interest rate may change based on the duration over which you want to pay the interest rate, right? So that is fixed rate mortgage. Fixed rate mortgage is very common among different uh, buyers, okay? Majority of the loan products, uh, people choose fixed rate because your rate is fixed. You may have a question saying, hey, now I'm borrowing for 418. Now let's say next year, for some reason, it comes to three and a half. What do I do? Now, unless you do refinancing, which means you have to pay off this current loan at 4.125, and then you borrow the, the remainder of the loan at a lower interest rate, right? You can do that refinance. It depends on what your lender has put restrictions on. Okay, so when you lend, when you sign up loan document, there are restrictions, but most lender will allow you to refinance after a certain period of time should the interest rate drop. Every time you do a refinance, there is a cost involved. There is X amount of dollars you need to spend when you do the refinance. So you need to make a judgment. Now, yes, the interest rate is lower and I'm going to pay, let's say, $3,000. Is it really worth to your advantage to pay the $3,000 in order to get a lower interest rate? Okay, that's a decision that you have to make. Now, I the second is adjustable rate mortgage. See, adjustable rate mortgage, as the name indicates, the rate is adjusted right so the rate interest rate changes let's consider the same example that we took before three hundred thousand dollars you are putting twenty percent down which is sixty thousand dollars and you're borrowing two hundred and forty thousand dollars so when you're borrowing money from a lender there is a product called um, ARM adjustable rate mortgage five forward slash one so what does this product five forward slash one mean? Five means for the first five years of the loan, the interest rate will be incredibly lower. Okay. So they may, the lender will say, you know what, I'm going to give you two and a half percent interest rate when you go with this product for first five years. That's a big advantage. But what happens after the fifth year? You know, in the fifth, after five years, the lender is going to decide whatever the interest rate at that time, and then they are going to add some points, which is which will be in your contract, and that will be the interest rate for the sixth year. Okay, 
So it means five years it is fixed and then every year the interest rate will be adjusted. So five years from now, for example, let's say the interest rate is 8%, then they will make those change and you will pay a higher interest rate on the money that you owe. Okay, So it is highly unpredictable um, and uh, <clears throat> if you, and it is a loan product if you plan to stay only for four years, maybe you're planning to buy a bigger home, then this could be a right product, right? So you may be wondering, how is that rate change adjusted, right? They normally, different lenders use an index. The common index is called LIBOR. It is the index uh, on the interest rate by London intra-bank offer rate, okay? That is the money that is the interest rate used by banks to borrow money from each other. So they will take the rate, add some additional cost, and that will be the interest rate for next one year. Now, can the interest rate go phenomenally higher? Let's say in sixth year, the interest rate is 17%. Now, there are some protection. Again, you need to read the mortgage uh, statements and what you are signing, where they normally cap, it may not go beyond X, X percent. So it gets very complex. So unless you understand this really well, talk with your lender to make sure you're very clear in what, your, what that loan product is for adjustable rate mortgage before you sign that paper, okay? So adjustable rate means the rate will change after a fixed period of time and the frequency of the change will be in the mortgage document and how much the interest rate and what index will be used and if there is any cap on the interest will all be in the loan document and it is very important you clear with the lender. Uh, then we are going to talk about the third category, which is government insured loan products. Now, what is a government insured loan product? The United States or the federal government has different programs in which they insure the loan. <clears throat> they offer loan products that are insured by the federal government. So it is from a borrower perspective, um, from not a borrower, from a lender who are, is lending the money, it gives the protection. So these loan products are designed to encourage housing, right? The federal government is saying buy a home uh, and your loan will be insured, right? So, so they are encouraging housing. So what are the loan products? Uh, number one, under government insured loan product is FHA loan. It's called Federal Housing Administration Loans. The second type of government insured loan product is VA loan, which is Veteran Affairs Loan. And the third type of government insured loan product is called USDA loans. It is uh, provided by United States Department of Agriculture, primarily for to encourage residency in the rural areas, okay? So let's dig into details about these three different types of government insured loan product. The first is FHA loan. Now FHA loan, you can uh, buy a home with uh, a cash down payment as low as 3.5%. Okay. So what does it mean? Let's say you like a condominium or a town home that's $100,000 and you want to buy that home. Now with FHA loan, that's a loan product backed by uh, government uh, insured, you, the down payment you need is only $3,500. So with $3,500, you can buy this $100,000 property. Again, this FHA loan can be applied for $100,000, $200,000, $300,000, $400,000 worth of home that you're going to buy. But the rule is minimum contribution to get the loan for on the down payment is 3.5%. 
Now, when you are putting three and a half percent and you're borrowing 96.5% from a lender, then the lender is going to need insurance so that when there is a default, the insurance will cover the lender. And that's why it is government insured loan products. So your monthly loan mortgage payment will be much higher because you have to pay for principal, you will pay for the interest, and every month you're going to pay what is called mortgage insurance because your portion of payment is low your insurance mortgage insurance will be high okay because you are protecting the lender should you be in default so you'll be paying a lot more money on monthly mortgage because of mortgage insurance okay the second type of government insured loan is called veteran affairs loan. Okay, this is uh, in veteran affairs loan there are specific eligibility requirement. This is especially for veterans who have served our armed forces. They have specific requirement as to who is eligible for a VA loan. One key advantage of a VA loan is that you don't have to make any down payment. It is zero down payment in order to get a VA loan. Okay, you don't have to have any uh, um, down payment to get a VA loan. So you can buy a four hundred thousand dollar home with zero down payment if you qualify for a VA loan. The last product of the government insured uh, uh, loan is USDA loans. And this USDA loan is specifically to encourage housing <clears throat> for residents or people who are living in rural areas. Okay, this USDA loan does not apply for um, metropolitan areas. Um, the US Department of Agricultural and Rural Development, if you go to that USDA Go, they have a map. So if you are planning to buy a home, if you enter in the address, it will immediately let you know if it is qualified for USDA loan. So if it qualifies, then you can shop with a lender that provides the USDA loan. Okay, so that is USDA loan. So now we are going to talk about conventional loan. So what is a conventional loan? Now conventional loan, very similar to the government insured loan, it is not insured by the federal government okay these conventional loans are not insured by the federal government right so let's use a specific example let's say you're buying a home that is three hundred thousand dollars you're making a down payment of fifteen thousand dollar or five percent right so you're borrowing $285,000. The interest rate is going to be 4.125. Let's say we are doing a fixed rate mortgage, which is for 30 years. Since your down payment is only 5% and you're borrowing 95% of money from the lender, you are considered risky in terms of lending. So in order to protect the lender, should you be in default, you need to pay a mortgage insurance. The term that is commonly used in the industry is called private mortgage in insurance, called PMI. So when you have PMI, you have to pay an additional monthly amount to your mortgage on top of your principal and your interest. Okay, PMI, and you will pay this mortgage insurance. Now this private mortgage insurance is provided by private lenders and it could be anywhere from 0.3% to 1.15% of your original loan amount every year. Folks, it is a lot of money that you will pay on PMI if your um, down payment is less than 20%. So any time that your down payment is less than 20% of the value of the property that you're planning to purchase, then PMI comes into play in conventional loan. 
and you will be paying additional uh, mortgage insurance every month. Now there are ways in which you can waive that PMI once your equity, the loan to the value of the property comes to at least 20%, then you can ask the lender to remove the private mortgage insurance. Whenever you make that change to remove the PMI, there is a cost involved because the lender has to verify that the value of your property is um, determine the value of the property. In order to determine the value of the property, there is a processing cost. It can range anywhere from $1,000 to $3,000 based on the loan and your credit score, etc. Okay? So you can waive it, but uh, with conventional loan, the key thing to know is that these loans are not insured by the federal government. Okay? Then, <clears throat> then there are a few other terms when you are dealing with uh, these uh, borrowing money is called is is a loan conforming loan or it is a non-conforming loan okay now all these loan products um, are governed by the guidelines by government enterprise called Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac okay these are federal government enterprises um, that has an established guideline on um, <clears throat> when a lender, any lender, is uh, lending money. Okay, so if these guidelines are met on a loan that you are borrowing, then they they are they comply to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac guidelines. Now, the reason why they have these guidelines is that these lenders will will lend you the money, and they resell in secondary uh, financial markets. To different individuals okay as long as the guidelines are met they have the freedom to resell if the guidelines are not met they cannot resell so the lenders are very particular that uh, when you borrow money they have to create a conforming loan because they cannot sell this loan and make money in secondary market so what are these guidelines at a very high level let's say that you're buying a home for five hundred thousand dollars with 20% down, okay? which means the loan amount that you're borrowing is 400,000. Okay, so now according to the conforming loan, as long as the loan amount is less than or equal to $453,100, okay, $453,100, then it is called a conforming loan. So the loan uh, will be categorized as a conforming loan. Okay? So let's take another example. <clears throat> let's say the same home, half a million dollar, and you're putting only 5% down payment. So which means you're borrowing $475,000. Now, according to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac guidelines, there's a table, if you go to their website, they have these conforming guidelines. This 475 is greater than their um, a threshold of 453,100. Okay, so it is no longer a conforming loan. So the lenders will say that we are going to provide you with a jumbo loan. Okay, so a jumbo loan is a non conforming loan in simple terms. So when they categorize as a jumbo loan, that means the interest rate and the terms and conditions are going to be much higher. So the interest rate on the money you borrow is going to be higher. And unless your credit score and your down payment is higher, you're going to pay a lot of money in order to acquire that loan. Okay, That is called a jumbo loan. Okay, It is a non-conforming loan that does not meet the established guidelines by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Folks, um, that at a very high level are six different types of loan products uh, or categories that you will find in the market. So one is fixed rate, the second one is adjustable rate, 
The third one is government insured. And again, in government insured, there are three different loan products, which is FHA, VA, and USDA loan. Then we talked about conventional loans. And then in conventional, it is not government insured. Then we talked about conforming loans, which are loans that fall into the guidelines established by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And finally, we talked about a category called jumbo loans. So the jumbo loans don't uh, fall into conforming loans. Therefore, your interest rate will be, the terms and condition of borrowing the money will be different. Now, I said I, if we do have time, I'm going to talk about how does a lender decide whether they are going to lend you money or not. Now, one of the key things, folks, is uh, two things. is called debt-to-income ratio. The second one is called loan-to-value ratio. Okay. So what is debt-to-income ratio? That means what percentage of your, of your income per month or use is debt, is that ratio, okay? For example, let's say your monthly income is $6,000. Then when you're buying a home, they are going to calculate your mortgage to be $1,200. let us say you're paying an automotive loan that is $100 per month. And then your credit card and other balances is you pay $300 per month. So when you add them together, 1,200 plus 100 plus 300, it is $1,600. So in this case, your debt to income, that is 1,600 divided by 6,000 is 0.26. Now research over a period of number of years has shown if your debt to, increase, uh, debt to income ratio is around 0.43%, then you're considered to be a reasonably less risky borrower. But if your debt to income is close to 0.5 or 0.55, then you're considered a risky borrower. So when you're considered a risky borrower, they are not going to deny your loan. They are going to still give you the loan or approve your loan but your terms and your interest rate may not be favorable. Okay, So this is commonly used by all most lenders across the six categories of loan products that we discussed today. Okay, Very important metric, debt to income ratio. Okay, The next thing that I wanted to discuss today is loan to value. Now, what loan to value is the loan that you're taking as a percentage of the value of the property? Again, the value does not mean what you're buying as a contracted sale price. Value is established by the lender. It's called a price to value. Okay. Let's say your loan amount is 190000 That's what you want to borrow and the lender finds out the value of the property is 240000 So when you look at the ratio, which is the loan to value is 0.79. Okay. So it is considered <clears throat> as a risk, less risky loan. Okay. Again, over a period of long time, as long as the loan to um, value is 80%, you're considered not to be a risky borrower. But if the loan to value is say 95, that means your loan is 95% of the value of the property, then you're considered as a risky buy borrower and therefore your loan amount and the interest rate, everything changes, okay? So folks, um, we have come to the top of the hour. The time is 30 minutes past six central daylight time. Um, <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed the show. Please like our page at facebook.com forward slash rocket reality TX or subscribe to our YouTube channel at tinyurl.com forward slash 
watch pogal again tinyurl.com forward slash watch pogal thanks for tuning in if you have any question on real estate to- uh, topic join me each week <clears throat> on sundays between 6 pm and 6 30 pm central date like time at facebook.com forward slash rocket reality again that is facebook.com forward slash rocket reality have a wonderful week